Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Molecular Makeup. Today I'm going to be breaking down the ingredients in Tati's new multivitamin called the Halo Body and Brain Booster. And I'm going to cite articles below. Um, I research scientific articles about each of these ingredients. And again, they'll all be in the description box below. And I'm going to be giving you my opinion of this vitamin um, as a chemist based on my research from these articles. And I just want to say before we get started that this is not in any way intended to supplement the advice of your physician or healthcare provider. You should always consult your healthcare provider before beginning any supplements or vitamins. I just wanted to give you my opinion as a chemist on these on the ingredients in the supplement based on my research. So the first ingredient that I was so happy to see in this supplement is folate because in many supplements you will see folic acid instead of folate. Now we need to talk about the difference between folic acid versus folate. So these are two different forms of vitamin B9 with very different impacts on our health. So vitamin B9 is an essential nutrient that naturally occurs as folate and deficiencies in folate lead to higher cancer risk. It also leads to higher risk of heart disease and stroke. Pregnant women who have deficiencies in folate, um, it actually causes birth defects in their children, um, including neural tube defects. So supplementing with folate sounds great, right? Since all these deficiencies lead to so many health problems. Well, here's the problem. Most supplements on the market contain folic acid, which is a, which is a synthetic form of vitamin B9 instead of folate. And this is a potential health risk because folic acid is not well metabolized by our bodies. And what ends up happening is there's a buildup in the bloodstream of folic acid. And this buildup in the bloodstream of folic acid leads to increased cancer risk. I'll have the articles linked below um, stating this, but it leads to increased cancer risk. Um, it also leads to um, masking of vitamin B12 deficiencies. And so vitamin B12 deficiencies are indicators of dementia and other neurological disorders. So, you know, if those are masked by the buildup of folic acid in the bloodstream, that could be very hazardous to your health if, uh, these, um, if this vitamin B12 deficiency goes unnoticed and untreated. So even at 400 micrograms, which is kind of the typical amount included in many supplements, even at 400 micrograms of folic acid, that can cause buildup in the bloodstream associated with these health risks. So that's why I was so happy to see that Tati's supplement actually contains folate, which again is the naturally occurring form of vitamin B9. It's the biologically active form. Our bodies metabolize it well. So this really makes me feel like Tati and her Halo team really care about the health of the consumer because, you know, there are so many vitamins on the market that have folic acid, even though there's been several studies to um, indicate that it, you know, increases cancer risk and causes these um, vitamin B12 deficiencies to go undetected. Um, so the fact that they included folate in here instead of folic acid really speaks to their character and motives, I feel like, because I really feel like that, you know, that shows that they really have the consumer's health in mind. The next ingredient that I was really excited to see in the supplement is inositol. Inositol is a sugar that is involved in cell membrane formation. It also regulates neurotransmitters such as serotonin and dopamine. So these are neurotransmitters, which are like chemical messengers in the brain. And when there are, you know, imbalances in these, it leads to neurological disorders such as depression, anxiety disorders, bipolar disorders, a variety of, um, anxiety disorders result from these imbalances. There have been several studies that are very compelling and very promising that inositol can help treat these neurological disorders such as depression, anxiety, bipolar. Now the most convincing evidence from all of these is for anxiety disorder. An example of this is that there were 20 patients um, suffering from anxiety, uh, panic, panic disorder. Um, and they were either, so the, it was a double blind controlled study. So the patients were either given a typical, uh, common everyday anxiety medicine, or they were given uh, inositol. And it was actually found that the patients that were given inositol reported um, significantly less panic attacks and um, a lot less severe panic attacks throughout the week um, and now they took this for a month and so yeah it, it appeared to be better um, at managing the uh, panic disorder than your typical anxiety medication and in Tati's you know supplement it's not as high of a dosage as like treating you know she, she's not marketing this to like treat 
these neurological disorders. However, um, it's been shown that even at the amounts included in here that it, it just helps with the regulation of uh, these neurotransmitters. And uh, the reason I talked about the um, anxiety and depression uh, studies so much here is because I truly have empathy and sympathy for anyone dealing with anxiety um, for anyone dealing with anxiety or any neurological disorder for that matter because I myself um, experienced uh, I was in a very traumatic car accident when I was about 15 years old and I experienced very bad anxiety um, disorder after that and um, you know, I, I have, you know, I might make a video opening up, opening up and telling my story about that eventually, but, you know, it, it this kind of thing just, like, really is something I'm passionate about. Actually, my research, um, I'm, I'm in my PhD in chemistry, but my research is overlapping neuroscience, chemistry, and glycobiology, and the reason I wanted to do that is because I have such a passion for wanting to help people with any sort of neurological disorder and I think a big part of that stems from my empathy with that and so that is why I you know I'm so excited to see such promising studies with inositol and again in Tati supplement it is a lot less um there are a lot it's a lot less amount right you know um but it's still you know at those amounts it regulates the uh, neurotransmitters. It's involved in cell membrane formation. Now, um, it's also been shown to help women with PMDD. Now, this is premenstrual dysphoric disorder, and these women, uh, again, it, they have depression-like symptoms. Uh, the most significant results for treating depression were among the women with this PMDD disorder. So I would love to make a video going into more depth about all the studies on inositol. Again, I chose to focus on the uh, neurological um, effects of it because that's something I'm very passionate about. Um, but I'm just going to list a couple of other um, health benefits that some studies have shown for inositol. But if you want me to make a video going into greater detail, just leave a comment below and let me know. Uh, one particular health problem that inositol has also been shown to help with is called polycystic ovary syndrome. And this is a condition that causes hormonal imbalances in women and it often leads to infertility. Um, they don't have ovulation um, typically. It was a double blind placebo controlled study so the women either um, were given um, inositol combined with folate for three months or a placebo pill. And it was found that um, this induced ovulation in 62% of the women that were treated with the inositol and folate combination. Now, again, this is in much larger quantities than in the HALO supplement. So, like all these studies that I've mentioned so far, the inositol is in um, way more excess than it, than it is in this vitamin. Um, so they were taking 4 grams of inositol with 400 micrograms of folate, whereas in this vitamin, inositol is at 20 milligrams, and the folate is at 400 micrograms, but inositol is in a much smaller dosage in this. And again, you know, I, I just wanted to report some of these studies because I find them very interesting and very hopeful for treatments for some of these um, health issues. Um, but again, even at the small amounts, you know, it's been shown to help regulate neurotransmitters. It's also been shown, there's some preliminary studies that suggest that it can help treat type 2 diabetes, help treat breathing issues for infants and with um, underdeveloped lungs, and it also uh, has the potential to treat OCD in some preliminary studies. So again, I just thought these were really interesting studies about inositol, and I wanted to share that with you. So now let's start looking at some ingredients that are actually elements on the periodic table of elements. So the first element I want to look at is molybdenum, which is element number 42 on the periodic table. Molybdenum is involved in many processes in your body, and one of the most important things is that it's converted to molybdenum cofactor. And this molybdenum cofactor activates four enzymes that are vital to processes in your body. And so one of these enzymes that it activates is aldehyde oxidase, which breaks down aldehydes. Aldehydes are toxins to the body. Um, so this is, um, aldehyde oxidase um, helps break that down. 
And again, that is um, activated by this molybdenum cofactor. Now, the acetate aldehyde buildup in the body quite often comes from imbalances in candida. Candida are yeast bacteria that live in the gut. Uh, they live off the sugars in your gut. And when there is an imbalance, either overactive candida or dot or candida die-off, which often can happen if you take antibiotics, for example, that can uh, throw off the balance. What happens is when there is an imbalance of this candida, it actually causes acetaldehyde uh, to be released in your body and it's uh, detrimental to your immune system, your nervous system. It has so many negative implications on the body. Molybdenum, so we need this molybdenum cofactor to help activate the enzyme that breaks down these acetaldehydes. And actually there was one study that showed that uh, people with can candida die-off actually experience some flu-like symptoms and that taking molybdenum really helps reduce those flu-like symptoms in these patients and it also highly increased their energy. Molybdenum also plays a role in breaking down sulfites. So another one of the enzymes that it activates is called sulfite oxidase. This, convol this converts sulfite to sulfate. When sulfites are um, built up in the body, they can actually trigger allergic reactions that include diarrhea, skin problems, and even difficulty with breathing. Um, so as you can see, it, um, molybdenum is important for activating these enzymes. Now, the only thing that I didn't understand about this supplement is that for the women's, it's 233% daily value of molybdenum, 100 micrograms. And for men, it's just 100% daily value um, for the molybdenum. I couldn't find any studies to um, kind of give a reason why women would need more or why you would need more than, you know, the daily recommended value. So with Halo, I've noticed that pretty much everything else, like I could find like, evidence to back it up like it this this makes sense um this is the only thing that i couldn't really find a reason for um the only thing that i could find but it's not like a scientific and there weren't any scientific articles i could find on it no i'm not saying there's not a reason for it i'm just saying that i personally just um that's just my question why um why have this um excess molybdenum for the women's versus the men's supplement i understand why you would want to have less in the men's because there are some studies that show that um excess molybdenum can cause a uh, decrease in sperm count in men but that's if it's taken at a very large excess so i understand why, why they would you know just keep it at 100 percent for the men's but i'm not really sure why they have it at 233 percent for the women's vitamin um, but when I was like digging a little deeper, I found some chiropractors that said that they recommend taking like four, um, 300 micrograms of it a day to treat um, candida issues. Now, I don't know where they got that number from. I mean, maybe there is something I couldn't find in the literature. I'm not sure where they got that 300 micrograms from um you know, so that is just a question that I still have. Why the excess molybdenum for the women's supplement? So that's, all, yeah, again, that's the only thing I felt like I couldn't really back up for you guys with. Uh, that's the only thing I felt like I couldn't really find strong evidence for in the literature for this supplement. And it's just a question that I have about it. But the other thing that um, if you guys research molybdenum impacts on the health, you might find this article. And when I first saw it, I was kind of... Um, concerned, but um, I read it, uh, I went into detail reading this, and I just want to report it to you. So it suggests that high levels of molybdenum in the urine of women between the ages of 50 to 80 um, are correlated with um, decreased mass in the spine. So decreased um, bone density in the spine. Now, when I first read this, I, when I first saw the abstract for this, I was concerned because I thought that they were saying that they administered supplements and that women in this age range had this problem. But no, this this was not um, looking, these patients were not taking any molybdenum supplements. They were just monitoring molybdenum concentrations in the urine 
for different age ranges, different races, uh, different genders, uh, just to see if they could find any correlation with that with uh, bone health and bone density. So, so the only significant finding they had was that women that were within the age range of 50 to 80 who had decrease in bone density um, in the spine also had very high concentrations of molybdenum in their urine. Now, I, I was looking into this and um, molybdenum can actually be released from the spine um, as you age. And so that's possibly what's happening. They're just excreting that in their urine. Um, so I don't really feel like this study is enough to, but because they weren't taking molybdenum supplements, I don't feel like it's a study to like cause fear or you know, like potential risk of taking molybdenum. The only thing for me, again, is that I just wish I had an answer to why they included 233% um, daily value of molybdenum. Now, I know a lot of vitamins have, you know, there are some vitamin D supplements that are like thousands of times, you know, the daily recommended value. So um, that's just something I'm not super familiar with. Um, so I think maybe asking like a pharmacist or asking your doctor would be um, a good if you're concerned about that. But I did look up the um, upper limit, so the maximum level that we can tolerate. The maximum that we can tolerate is 2,000 micrograms, and that's when you start noticing um, health issues. And again, in the women's supplement, it's 100 micrograms, so it's 20 times less um, the you know maximum. So it's um, so yeah, it's not a problem there. I just, it's just something I personally would like to know, like what's the reasoning for having, you know, over twice the amount of molybdenum in the women's supplement than in the men's supplement. That is just something I personally felt like I couldn't answer from my research. So the next ingredient that I wanna talk about is selenium. Selenium is element number 34 on the periodic table. It's a mineral, it's a powerful antioxidant um, that helps fight oxidative stress. Um, studies have also shown that it helps prevent heart disease, thyroid disorders, and also helps prevent mental health decline. So selenium has the ability to reduce DNA damage, oxidative stress, boost the immune system, and also destroy cancer cells as shown by some scientific research. It's also very interesting that low selenium intake is associated with anxiety and depression. It also can lead to cognitive decline. And another thing that selenium is involved with is thyroid regulation. So in geographical areas where, there's, where there are selenium deficiencies in the soil, there is a much higher incident of uh, thyroid diseases because there actually is a selenium dependent enzyme in your thyroid cells. Um, so this selenium deficiency will disrupt the activity of that enzyme and thus cause issues with the thyroid. So there was actually a study conducted at the University of Munich in Germany where there were 90 patients with thyroid disorders. So they were administered either selenium supplements with their meal or a placebo pill. And this was a double blind and controlled study. The results of the study showed that in their blood, the antibodies um, associated with thyroid disease were actually greatly decreased for the patients who took selenium as compared as compared to the control group. The level of antibodies associated with thyroid disease were significantly lower, and so this study suggests that selenium could be a potential way to treat thyroid disorders. So now let's look at iodine, which has the atomic number 53 on the periodic table, and <clears throat> iodine actually also promotes thyroid health. It helps manage overactive thyroid glands, and it also improves cognitive function. Um, and iodine intake in pregnancy is actually associated with brain development in fetuses. So according to the American Cancer Society, radioactive iodine can provide significant improvement for those with thyroid cancer. So, so it significantly increases the chances of survival for those with thyroid cancer. Okay, so then the next ingredient I want to talk about is zinc. Zinc has actually been shown to be important in skin biology. When there's deficiencies in zinc, it can actually lead to some skin disorders. It also is a very powerful antioxidant. And there was actually a really interesting study looking at the effects of zinc on oxidative stress. And they looked at zinc with um, oral supplementation of zinc combined with vitamin C given to wheat mill workers who are exposed to AFB1, which is known to cause oxidative stress. 
And so they were given, uh, administered this either, um, either a, a placebo pill or they were administered this zinc supplement. And it was interesting in the findings I actually found that they actually found that the liver enzymes associated with toxicity in the body were decreased when these workers took zinc. Um, so that was interesting. So that further supports that it's involved with um, antioxidant, uh, that further supports that it has antioxidant properties. So another element included here is boron, which is, has the atomic number five on the periodic table. This is, it plays an important role in bone health. It helps metabolize key vitamins and minerals, and it also helps with memory. And um, there was actually a study in the Journal of Environmental Health Perspectives, and people took 3.25 milligrams of boron in their diets, and those patients were found to have better memory and better hand-eye coordination for tasks than those with low boron levels. And something interesting also about boron is that it actually extends the half-life of vitamin D and estrogen, and those are both involved in bone health. So half-life means half the time um, that it takes for a substance to break down to half of its starting amount. Um, so it's been theorized that boron can help enhance bone health by elevating the amounts of vitamin D that can work in the body and also elevating the amounts of estrogen um, in the body so that it lasts longer. Now in Tati's video, now in Tati's video, she said that she specifically wanted to formulate this to have benefits for eyes and really focus on eye health with this. And she mentioned that there were three ingredients that kind of worked synergistically together to help promote good eye health. And she said that that was C3G, astroxanthin, and zeaxanthin. Now, I did find an article that did confirm that C3G and zeaxanthin together really help with eye health. Um, it helps prevent retina, retinal damage. Um, I couldn't find one for all three of them together. Um, you know, helping eye health, but I did find, you know, articles on astroxanthin also helping eye health. It's also, astroxanthin is also helpful for skin. Um, it has many skin benefits, but, um, yeah, I'm not saying that that research isn't out there. I just couldn't find any published data on the three of them working together, but I did definitely find that C3G and zeaxanthin work together very well to promote eye health. I also saw studies on astroxanthin that it definitely, that it also promotes eye health. So there are studies that support that zeaxanthin um, appears to absorb excess light energy to prevent damage from plants from too much light and especially from a high energy light rays called blue light. So this specifically has been shown to help reduce the damage caused by blue light. Yeah, so I found these studies about the eye health very interesting, and um, if you're interested, I can make a video going into more detail. I know this video is getting kind of long now, so I just wanted to kind of briefly mention those here, but um, please let me know if you're interested in learning more about eye health and how these ingredients play a role in that, and I can definitely make a video discussing that further. But I just lastly wanted to go over the ingredients that I haven't gone over yet, so I'm just going to briefly go over these. Um, over these last few ingredients. Again, if there's anything you want me to elaborate on or if you'd like me to make a video going into more detail, I'd love to do that. I've actually been thinking about starting um, uh, a video each week called Molecule Monday where I kind of break down uh, an ingredient in skincare, makeup, or supplements and going into detail about the studies done on these because I know uh, yeah, again, I know this video is getting kind of long, but I did want to go into some of the studies in this video because I thought they were really interesting. But for the rest, of, for the remainder of the ingredients, I'm just going to give you a brief overview. Vitamin B1 helps convert helps convert nutrients to energy. Vitamin B2 um, is necessary for energy production, cell function, and fat metabolism. Vitamin B3 drives the production of energy from food. Vitamin B5 is necessary for fatty acid synthesis. Vitamin B6 helps your body release sugar from stored carbohydrates for energy and create red blood cells. Vitamin B12 is necessary for blood cell formation and also proper, um, also proper nervous system and brain functioning. 
vitamin C or ascorbic acid, and I did do some research, and ascorbic acid is the most stable form of vitamin C in supplements, so that's great that they included it as ascorbic acid. So vitamin C is required for the synthesis of neurotransmitters and also the synthesis of collagen, which is the main protein in your skin. Vitamin A is necessary for proper vision and organ function. Now, I know in my previous video where I was talking about hair, skin, and nail vitamins, I had said that I don't support vitamin A being in hair, skin, and nail vitamins, and that is because there's no evidence to support that it helps with hair growth or um, really not much evidence about the skin either, so I didn't really think it had a place in hair, skin, and nail supplements, but for a multivitamin, I think that having vitamin A is um, good. Um, so again, vitamin A necessary for proper vision and organ function. Um, and vitamin D, which um, I mentioned this in a previous video talking about um, Tati's Halo supplements versus other supplements on the market, but um, Tati's vitamin D3 is derived from lichen, so it's vegan. And in most supplements, it's derived from actually sheepskin oil. And so it would not be considered, so those would not be considered vegan, but Tati's supplement is considered vegan. It's also, uh, it's vegan, cruelty-free, soy-free, dairy-free, gluten-free. So I really appreciate that about her supplements that she really has everyone in mind when she creates this. She wants to be inclusive toward everyone who might have sensitivities to certain food, uh, certain lifestyles like vegans. So um, I really appreciate that, that she is inclusive toward everyone with that. Um, okay, and then vitamin K is required for blood clotting and a proper bone development. I realized that I forgot to mention rose hip powder extract. So I think I got all the other ingredients. I just realized that I forgot to mention rose hip powder extract. So that is involved in having healthy skin. It's an antioxidant and it really helps promote skin health as well. So again, please let me know if there's any of these ingredients that you want me to go into more detail and more depth. And again, this video is just my opinion based on the scientific articles that I researched for each of these ingredients. Again, this is not meant in any way to supplement the advice from your physician or healthcare provider. Please always consult your healthcare provider before starting any multivitamins or supplements. Um, I actually have decided that um, I did order this and I want to take it for one month. I'll let you know if I notice any changes within a month. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you a little background on my health situation currently just so you know going into this. So um, the reason I'm only going to try it for a month is because I found out recently that it appears that I have some sort of autoimmune disorder and um, I, I have to go to a specialist to try to sort that out and I'm not sure if they'll want me to be on uh, a multivitamin. I'm not sure how it will um, impact the um, blood test results and things like that. So I'm going to have to talk to them about that. Um, but I definitely am planning to try this out for a month and let you guys know how I feel about it if I notice any changes. But this is, these were just my thoughts on the ingredients. Um, I hope this review was helpful. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.